What's up guys? We're back working on the VE again now. Um, it's it's pretty horrible day out here. It's been super, super heavy rain. Uh, There's meant to be a massive storm coming. So we just spent a bit of time this morning just sort of storm proof and everything, getting all the customer cars undercover and stuff like that. Uh, and I haven't been able to film much of being able to tell you what's going on because when it's raining heavy in this shed, you can't hear a damn thing. So power's coming and going. Typical, pretty typical of here when it's storming. So we're just sort of pushing through and doing what we can as we can do it. So as you've just seen, we've made our new fuel line, which incorporates our new flex fuel sensor. Uh, that's made out of Airflow 200 series braid, um, and that's all done. Worked perfectly, looks great. Very easy to work with, good, good stuff there. As you've also seen, we've got our new electric pump. Uh, now we were under the impression that the customer was getting a uh, 23 litre per minute one, but he's actually given us the 15 litre per minute one. So the fact is that the, the capacity of this system is not very big. It's certainly gonna be maybe two, three liters. Uh, it's not, that's why a lot of people put big, uh, big reservoirs in them. But we're just gonna put the 15 liter per minute one in and just see how it goes. If we're getting high intake temps, well then we might have to look at upgrading to the bigger electric pump. But as we were talking about this morning between me and Rex, it's sort of a double-edged sword because the faster you're pumping, the faster it's moving through the cooler anyway. So, you know, if you're moving, um, the longer it sits in the cooler, potentially the better it's going to be. So it's sort of just going to be a matter of finding the happy medium. The 15 litre per minute one actually may work pretty well with this setup. So we'll just see how it goes. We're going to run it anyway. At the moment, we're just working on getting some power for the pump. We're going to mount it down here. We're not, well, it doesn't really come with any solution to mount it, but we figure if we sit it down there like that, by the time we have a line coming off the front, zip tie that to that aircon line, and then the other line going down beside the radiator and through the front to the cooler here, uh, it should sit in situ pretty well. It shouldn't move around very much. So it comes with this new little bit of a loom here. Um, I checked in the paperwork. Apparently this pump only draws 1.3 amps, so absolutely screw all current draw. So it means we should be able to pretty much pull power from just about anywhere. Um, so yeah, we just gotta find some way that's uh, 12 volt ignition to draw power for it from, and that should be fine. We're still waiting on our 400 series line and fittings to actually complete the cooler system. So unfortunately we can't finish that yet. Uh, and we're still waiting for our air filter and our, um, our intake pipe and everything to get here to finish that off. So uh, we found a solution for our purge valve. So uh, as you can see, we were gonna use the stock LSA one. I think I explained in the last video. Uh, but this has been drilled and tapped, so we actually can't bolt the stock one back in, it doesn't fit. So we've decided this one that someone's drilled and tapped, we found a fitting that works uh, into our right angle into a barb, which is a six mil barb, and we're just gonna use the stock L98 purge valve, and that's gonna go obviously from there uh, through to where the purge valve is. So, come up with a solution for that, that's that sorted out. Uh, but yeah, now we're just waiting a few of the last final little things. Uh, finish off our heater line, finish off our cooler lines, finish off our intake, and we're pretty much good to go after that. So anyway guys, I know that the start of this build happened real quick. We had, you know, the motor out, torn down, built and everything back in in like two episodes. And then from there, I know it's sort of dragged on a bit. I've been trying to keep the episodes sort of short, but I just, I wanted to really well document uh, exactly all the things we had to go through to make this swap work. Cause I know there's probably a lot of people out there that are quite interested in supercharging their VEs. And this is probably honestly the cheapest way you're gonna supercharge it. If you can pick up a cheap LSA blower second hand, it's, you know, it's, it's, you, you're gonna be way better off than buying say a Magnuson or a, uh, a um, anything else really. Although the LSA blowers aren't as big as, you know, like a Whipple or a Magnuson or something like that. And we all know Whipple blowers are pretty much the most efficient on the planet. It's still a lot of bang for buck if you can get it done. So that's why it's dragged on a bit. I just wanted to make sure it's, it's documented well. But hopefully this will be the last episode. Um, it, this is a bit late from the other episodes. I'm, I apologize, but we're just waiting on stuff to get here, really. So we're going to wait all this. We'll complete this and have it on the dyno in this episode. See what we can sort of make out of it. It's going to be great. What's up, guys? We finally received a few of the parts we've been waiting for for this VE. So we are itching closer and closer to getting this thing on the dyno. I do apologize again for this video being quite delayed from the rest of the build series, but I felt the series had already dragged out enough and I wanted to make sure that there was only one last video. So this last video is going to be getting it all finished up and getting it on the dyno. I didn't want to drag it out any longer. So anyway, Rex uh, throughout the week has been sorting out the purge valve. He sorted out the the entire purge valve system, which is awesome. We use the old purge valve lines because underneath the actual, uh, like the hard plastic hose on them, they're actually just barbs and they're the quick connect, which is right for the purge valve. So Rex mounted it here on the side of this uh, actuator for the bypass for the supercharger, which is a perfect little threaded hole for it. Looks really nice and neat there. Straight out of the purge valve, 
onto that barb and that goes straight out of there onto the back there it should look really nice and neat and almost factory that's awesome that's that sorted as you just saw we got our fuel line sorted uh so we're still waiting on a few fittings for the cooler system and that sort of thing but hopefully they'll be here today regardless this rocked up yesterday so this is our little patch loom extension kit uh from uh conversion wiring specialties so um oh, ultimate conversion wiring i should say so I meant to say. So these are all just the little adapters and extensions that are required for doing this exact swap. So it's awesome that they've actually put this kit together. That's really, really good. So we can go ahead and fit most of this stuff today. That gets this thing one step closer. We've also got a filter and stuff there for it so we can start getting some fluids into this engine. We also did buy a transmission service kit for the 6L80. So we are going to do a service on the 6L, uh, obviously once we get it back on the hoist, but that will be a bit of a later problem, but definitely before the dyno. So at the moment, we've got everything else here that we need. Um, we actually did, I think I showed that before, but the pump's wired up and it's just piggybacked off, off the purge valve, which is where the uh, flex fuel sensor is piggybacked off the power four. So that's all piggybacked off there. As you can see, you can hardly even notice it's there. It's very nice and neat, everything's sweet. So apart from this, getting this on, the last things we are waiting for are just our last sort of fittings to complete the cooling system and our bend and air filter all of which are coming from the same place so hopefully they're here today right oh guys so fly by wire extension that just runs at the moment i've got it running under the snout there up to where the stock one was that's pretty much the neatest way i could see to run it then we've got our map sensor extension which runs back around to this side where the stock map sensor is on the uh l98 and then we've got the iat extension which actually runs off the map plug down here so everything's plugged in now and electrically we're all ready to go so it's as simple as that, that's awesome. They also include a extension for the uh, purge valve, which you would need if you were running it in the stock location for the LSA. But because we're running ours here, we don't need it. So keep that for another one. Anyway, guys, I'm just gonna chuck a filter in this thing and get some oil in it, fill it up with some fluids. Pretty boring stuff, won't bother, fil bother filming it, but um, we'll pick this up again when we get our stuff from, from Rocket for the all the cooler system and all that sort of stuff. So hopefully by then we're pretty much ready to go. All right, guys. So the big girl's got fluids now. Um, we've left the plugs out, uh, but we've got some plugs there that have got down the 0.8. Uh, but we're ready to turn it over and get some oil pressure up, and then we're gonna whack the plugs in and start the thing, have it running. So we'll get to do first start. Uh, we're obviously still waiting on our fittings and stuff from Rocket. They unfortunately didn't get here in time for this week, but uh, it doesn't need the cooler and stuff to, for start up and to run. So. We can start it up and run it. We already know how lumpy this cam is from that Malou we did. It had the exact same cam in it. So pretty excited to hear this thing with the supercharger. Um, although for those of you who don't know, the LSA actually has like a bypass that acts under vacuum. So there's like a second throttle body around this area, um, which is act actuated by this um, actuator, which under vacuum opens and bypasses the supercharger straight into the intake. And they reckon with this system, um, the, the supercharger actually draws screw all uh it just makes it way more efficient at um cruising that sort of thing because it's not actually uh driving the supercharger or whatever that's a good pump <laughs> what screw all <laughs> screw all <laughs> how's i've been in this boot disconnecting this battery and i only just realized right now that it's got these freaking subs in the back of it <laughs> dafty anyway that's pretty sick All right, guys, we're finally back onto this VE. We finally received our box of stuff we've been waiting for. Um, so this is from Rocket Industries. It's weird, sometimes we order stuff from them and it's literally here the next day. And sometimes like this stuff we order and it takes sort of six days. So I don't know, it's weird, but it is what it is. Either way, we've got it here now. So this is our 
intake pipe. We've got an Ali and a stainless, depending on which one we wanted to use. Um, and then over here, we've got all our fittings that we needed. So these are the actual fittings for the cooler on the on the blower lid, um, and a couple other fittings we needed. So uh, I've just been working out this morning where I'm going to mount the filler. Uh, so these are our new fittings. They clip on there um, on the actual blower lid, which is awesome. So this is our filler. We actually managed to salvage this. Uh, the bloke who owns the 80 series Land Cruiser out there that we're doing the forged 1FZ uh, turbo build for. He had on that car a water to air intercooler setup previously. However, upon talking to him, he is really chasing a very uh, reliable, simplistic setup. So he's wanting to go away from the water to air and go go to an air to air. Uh, for what he's doing with that car, doesn't particularly warrant the need for a water to air anyway. So it's just overcomplicating things for no apparent real like reason. Uh, so we managed to uh, use the filler that was on that setup. One less thing we had to buy, which is good. Always trying to do what we can to recycle stuff and save money rather than have things just sit around in boxes and doing nothing. So I made up this little bracket here, which mounts it off one of the empty posts off the, uh, the blower lid. Um, so that's going to mount there pretty well. As you can see, that's tapped into above the pressure area of the filler. So I just got to make sure that that bolt isn't long enough to interfere uh, with the actual pressure in the cap. And I'm going to paint this all all black when I'm ready. Um, so it all matches sort of thing. So it's all nice and black. So I just made this little bracket out of some 20 mil uh, RHS uh, or SHS, I should say. Uh, and it's actually mounted up there pretty nice. It works pretty well. I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, so now just working out the, 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 uh, the cooler routing. Uh, I've extended the power steering uh, hose so that actually is mounted up there now where it needs to be. So that's properly mounted. Um, so now it's just a matter of plumbing this in. So two more developments as well. Uh, we did have someone in a previous video on YouTube comment in the comment section that they've actually just done a, one of these LSA superchargers on their L98. He sort of gave us a heads up. Uh, the isolator on the back of the, um, uh, what do you call it, like the main shaft for the, the main screw on the, on the supercharger. Uh, they're made, I think they're made of like a polyurethane or some sort of material like that. And um, they get soft and get noisy from what I can tell from the research I've done. This thing does seem to have a little bit of a rattle, a little bit of a noise. So I am, we are pretty sure that that's probably an issue. Uh, the guy in the comment section on that video pretty much advised that we go to a solid isolator before we go ahead and put the, the supercharger on uh, so that it do doesn't have this issue and we don't face this issue further down the track. Uh, unfortunately, by the time that he commented that and that video came out, we were already well, well far ahead from there and the supercharger was already bolted on. So uh, since then, we've actually got it running. We've realized we think it is probably a little bit noisy. Uh, so we are contemplating going down that road of actually pulling the snout back off the supercharger and changing that to a solid, um, solid unit so that we don't have that noise. But we're not quite sure yet. We're just gonna wait and see what the customer wants to do. Now, the second development is we actually had someone on Facebook reach out to us and sort of give us a heads up. They reckon that they ran this, uh, this fuel module, the, the fuel module we put in this VE, uh, the 1000 horsepower street fighter module. They reckon they ran it on their supercharged VE. They had like a, a, a Magnuson blown VE. And they reckon uh, it actually leaned out really bad and did a lot of damage to their motor. Um, so given that they've given us that heads up while we're at, the other thing we're gonna actually do is put a, just a Dash 6 to Dash 6 uh, adapter in the rail with a 1 8 MBT bunk so that we can put a fuel pressure sensor into the rail so that we can keep an eye on that while we dyno it. So, we want to, given that this could be a, an issue we may potentially face, we want to be able to keep a really good close eye on that fuel pressure, make sure it doesn't drop, make sure this thing's not going to lean out and do any damage. Uh, so, you know, who, it could have just been an unlucky. They might have just been unlucky. Something else could happen. You never really know. Uh, so we never, you know, whenever we get advice like this, we always take it on board, but we don't go, we don't take it as gospel because every setup's different and, you know, you never know what could have happened. So uh, either way, obviously, we're going to take that into account for sure. So we're going to chuck in a fuel pressure sensor and actually give a really keep a really good eye on this while it's on the dyno and and you know for the initial fair bit of abuse that this thing's going to get we're going to keep an eye on that fuel pressure anyway guys it's nice to finally have this stuff so we can finally finish this thing off and get it ready for the dyno uh rex finished the gearbox service the other day so the gearbox has all been serviced this all new fluids new filter which is awesome um so once i finish this off finish off our intake we've got our pod filter here that also came in that box uh so I'll be able to finish this up today and we'll have it ready to hit the dyno, which is awesome. So we're also, we're always very appreciative of people who bring this sort of thing to our attention. Um, you know, particularly when we're using a lot of this stuff for the first time, it's always good to hear feedback. It's one of the great things about having this YouTube is that we do get that side of that side of things. So uh, now we know a few things of what to look for, which is, which is awesome. It's, you know, a great lead forward for us. 
better than uh, having to learn the hard way pretty much is <laughs> learn from someone else's hard way that they had to learn so anyway we'll just keep that on all that stuff and uh, hopefully we don't have the same issues but if we do we'll have to go down avenues of how we can sort them out when that when that happens so anyway the other thing is uh i had a heap of comments they people reckon that the lsa engine mounts actually drop the motor so you might not have to get them milled if you can just buy lsa ones pretty sure tough mounts actually do a rubber mount that actually drops it down a bit as well so there are other options over what we did it's just that what we did was easy and local and free well free because uh the bloke who did the machining owed the guy who owns the car a favor so it was free for us to do that so that's the way we went down but there may obviously be other ways to get around that all right guys it's been a long day it's been a much longer process than i expected this to be just to sort this out i've ended up having to completely change my plans a few times uh but that happens that's cars it is the way the cookie crumbles so uh first issue i had was that the filler that we scavenged from that other car uh the fittings in it were actually three quarter not five eight uh, Rex ordered all 5.8 uh, Aeroflow 400 series line uh, plus, you know, uh, AN10 to, to, you know, for 5.8. For so everything was for 5.8. Uh, so I had to find fittings for that, which I managed to find. One of them was brass. It looks pretty bad, but it is working. It is what it is. Second issue I had was that the cooler is actually three quarter as well, not 5.8, the actual two ports on the actual heat exchanger. Um, so I had to use some adapters and a little bit of three quarter line. Uh, the problem with that was the three quarter heater hose that I used um, it's uh, the sort of hose where you can't get a real tidy ADS bend in it, it just kinks, it likes to kink. Don't have any really good quality um, three quarter hose around, so like it's good heater hose, but it's just it's not like Aeroflow 400 series where you can actually get a pretty tight radius on the bend and it still re retain that integrity. This stuff just kinks. Uh, so I had some issues routing the lines here, um, pretty much in a way that uh, the three quarter would actually not kink. Uh, so there's enough room, enough radius on the bend. Then I had to put these adapters into the 5.8 for our 400 series uh, to achieve that, as well as get the bumper to actually fit as well. Um, I had to route one either way. There was no way around it. There's no way I could route them both the same way. I originally wanted these both to come up this side and both come in this side like that. That's how it was going to be. Uh, fortunately, that didn't work out. So I had to route one this way, which didn't come up too bad. I'm actually, I'm not too... I'm pretty happy with how it is. It's just annoying that this is sort of out here in nowhere. It looks a bit weird, but anyway, what do you do? What do you do? All right, everything seems to be fine. Everything seems to be really good. There's no leaks that are obvious from anywhere. Uh, just started up and moved it over to here.
is where we're at at the moment. Calling it quits for today, it is Sunday, so <laughs> we thought we better not annoy the neighbours too much, so. That's canning it for today, that's mostly the 98 tune, mostly sorted, um, as you can see, where it's sort of just under 10 pound. Um, well, it's, that, it's not even, it's not that sorted, that's just, um, that was only one adjustment to the fuel table. Yeah, we're just going to do some more cleaning up tomorrow. Yeah, there's still there's still plenty to clean up there, so I'm, I'm pretty... So we're um, pretty certain it's going to go over 560 on 98. Yeah, and that's no timing too, like I've pulled timing out till we sort the fuel, yep. so it's like, yeah, it's, I'm impressed actually. It's savage. <laughs> <laughs> you can see, like that's, that green run was where I tried to stomp it and it was fairly, a yeah. little bit brutal on it. You can see these runs, because obviously being a blower, Easy boost is linear, but you can see where I've sort of ramped into it just yep. to try and get it to. So as that. you could see from some of them clips, um, we did have some traction issues. <laughs> so I had to move, I had to move the chops forward to try and get it to come up onto the rollers a bit harder. Um, so we've got it sorted at the moment. Um, it's got traction for now, which is good. Try and get this sort of finished, but yeah. Yeah, that when we jammed it, you can see where it rolled up and rocked back. Yeah, it's doing that rocking thing, which we can sort out. Yep. But yeah, you can see like that, you know, by 3000 revs, it's, you know, you're over 350 wheel, it's just bang. And that's with that converter and the way it flares, like this thing, yep. you'd be driving it on the road. If you stomp it, it'll just go bang. Yep. Light them up. Light them up. Tire frying material. So at the moment, um, we're only turning it to 6.5. Uh, we, we're gonna probably turn the limit up to maybe 6.8. Um, although being being stock bottom, and we're not sure it's how. Six, it's already at 6.8, is it? Yeah. Oh, so we might, we might turn it up to seven, but being still stock bottom end, we're not sure how hard we really want to turn it. Um, but this, like this cam uh, in the six liter, is just, as you can see, it just wants to keep going this thing <laughs> like it just wants to keep revving it just wants to keep making power um so we're, we're we're stoked to finally some see some results out of this thing um as you know we got really good results with this cam in, in tommy's maloo which was the aspirated ls3 um it was a really really good power result but also a really really good drivability result for for such power usually in a in an aspirated combination to be making the sort of power tommy's was you end up with a really, really piggish, dog rooty sort of cam. It's really hard to street drive. Um, but what we found with Tommy's was that it was really, really nice um, and easy to drive, particularly being a manual. For this thing, it wasn't such a big deal because it's auto and we're putting a converter in it. Um, but it's good to see that uh, as we expected, this cam is responding to boost very well. So we actually are, we're, at the moment, we're still talking with Tommy, but we are planning on boosting that Malu as well. So very keen to see the results of that eventually as well. But it's been really nice after all this time to see some results of this thing. Still a bit to go, and obviously we still haven't even touched the 85 yet, but uh, that, that's really good. That's awesome. We are finding that with this, uh, the smaller 15 litre per hour pump uh, from Davies Craig, and uh, obviously this thing being completely stock cooler set up with no reservoir. Uh, so the capacity of the blower cooler system is quite small. As you can see, it is actually making quite a big amount of boost, particularly with this cam. So for the size of an LSA blower, this thing is probably, t it's turning pretty hard. And we are seeing some pretty high intake temps. So we're keeping a very close eye on that. Um, we're not gonna try and put too much timing into this 98 sort of <laughs> tune for that exact reason. And Rex has set the uh, the intake air table to be very conservative as far as pulling out uh, timing when it gets hot. Uh, but we may have to look into potentially either a, a nice big reservoir, which is a very common upgrade for LSA powered cars, or slash and a, uh, a higher volume uh, pump for the system, the, the 22 litre per hour one. So uh, we'll just see how it goes. We're keeping a close eye on that. It's something that we were very aware of. So, uh, but apart from that, this thing is, is looking really good. It's going well, and uh, it's just gonna be an absolute monster. So obviously um, the, the GM ECUs have very, very, very good, um, very advanced knock detection. So even though we're seeing high intake temps and we are still tuning conservatively, uh, the GM PCM system you know they're, they're really good so so far we've had no issues with our fuel pressure i'm um, just keeping an eye on that but uh yeah we're definitely again keeping an eye on that i think e85 is definitely going to be the telltale sign if that's a problem all right guys so we're probably going to finish this episode here uh simply because i think it's it's probably still going to be another week before we can actually get this trend finished off um and i really want to get some results for this car out i didn't want to i didn't want to do an extra episode on this car um i figured it's already dragged on enough but uh, I figured it's better to get this episode out 
sort of soon so you can at least see some results and then um, probably be another week before we get the final video of the final tune out. Uh, we're still very confident that it's going to go 560 plus on pump uh, and then yeah we'll see what we can do on E85 but we're pretty excited to see what this thing's going to actually pump out on some E85 with a fair bit of timing so that'll be awesome. Uh, we're still going to talk to the owner about yeah putting an extra reservoir or, or doing something with this cooling system. Um, it's yeah that being said it's super super hot ambient temps um but yeah it is sort of getting up there the intake air temps so we'll see how we go anyway guys thanks for watching as always hope you've enjoyed um and tune in for the next one and hopefully we'll get some more results for you pretty soon peace out see you bye